Welcome, everybody, to the Back of the Bus podcast. This week, we're hitting you with the illustrious, the second annual fantasy football extravaganza. show. Extravaganza. Oh, we were going extravaganza, not <laughs> show. Are we doing the horn? We're not doing the horn? Shut up. We haven't introduced you yet. Okay. All right. That's <laughs> perfect. This is great. So. As always, it's your boy Half and Black here in the studio. Again, totally renovated, million-dollar renovation. Audio quality should be perfect. If you're listening to us, wherever you're listening to us on, rate us five stars if you love us, five stars if you hate us. You can catch us on the two most popular podcast sites. That's Apple Podcast and Google Podcast. Or you can catch us on Podbean, and you can catch us on YouTube. If you want to follow us on the Instagrams, or the Insta as the children like to call it, Follow us at Back of the Bus Podcast. There we go. And if you want to email us, which nobody does, you can email us at Back of the Bus Miami at gmail.com. Also, if you want to find our MySpace, you can't do that because it's not around anymore. Correct. Awesome. So we're going to get started with the show. We got a lot of great information, but we need to introduce somebody. Somebody, if you've listened to all of season one, you will have known. Um, you didn't have to listen to all of season one, to be honest, just one show. Um, <laughs> He is a longtime friend, a longtime booty partner. There we go. I didn't want to, I didn't know how to say that, but yeah, yeah. I, I got you. Yeah. All right, so this is Plex. <laughs> Plex is the co owner of your fantasy football team, Black. Correct. Correct. I have no co owners because I can handle my own fantasy football oh, team by my oh, damn self. Oh, shots fired. Uh... Pew, pew, pew. But you know what? What? The, you don't handle that, that well because... I've never won the championship. Correct. And how many have we won there, Pete? Uh, two in five years. I and think. how many finals have we been to? Uh, another one. So, yeah, three in five years. Congratulations. I, I just made the playoffs last year. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? Oh, <laughs> hey, <snap>. hey. <laughs> You're getting steps. there. You're getting there. You know, it's great. I Listen... I'm not a fantasy. I, you know, I got a lot of other crap going on. I can't just watch fantasy football all day, and I can't listen to the fantasy football shows. Although I do this time of year, it's like Christmas time for men. So what happens is I realize that I put on the fantasy, the fantasy football uh, radio station from Sirius XM a lot more on my car. So it is kind of like like when you start seeing the Christmas lights come out. Like I start playing fantasy football uh, mock drafts. I start printing out different sheets of I've fantasy never football. Done a mock draft. Event. What? Oh, mock oh, drafts man, are they're, great. They're you know fun. what mock drafts help you do? They help you realize you're not the dumbest person ever. I was in a mock draft and somebody took Aaron Rodgers in the first round. And look, no matter what you guys think, that's a yeah, dumbass move. That is horrible. Didn't somebody keep Aaron Rodgers in our league? Uh, that's yeah, different. That is horrible. Oh, okay. That's different. Like, look, if you're going to keep him, now, okay, we're going to get in the nuts and bolts later, but it, does your league just first two rounds is the keeper Keepers, league? Yeah. It's not when you drafted them? Correct. Ah, uh, so you got you to gotta move up, guys. Get sophisticated. You got to get your league to wherever you draft the guy, that's the position that you lose. So, for example, if you picked up Michael Thomas in the 10th, guess what happens? In the 10th, you don't have a pick because your Michael Thomas pick goes in. Yeah. But that's great because if your ones and twos don't fil- uh, work out for you, you can drop them and you got one and two in the next season. They have that in, in auction leagues where you, depending on how much you pay for a player, yeah. that's how much you keep them. Sometimes they bump the price up a little on those players. Yeah. But if you pay $3, like you said, for Michael Thomas, yeah. you get to keep him for $3. Yeah, which is great. Plus an extra you know, but, 10% increase. You know what I think? I think it incentivizes people. And we'll, again, this is probably getting too more too much in depth but it incentivizes people to kind of keep your lower tier guys who maybe you took a uh, you know just took a chance on and they worked out they were in top five you know yeah well i gotta be honest i love our keepers this year in, yeah in the league that we're doing we mm-hmm. have uh, some pretty nice guys there and i think we're going to talk about right. them in just a second so when is your draft tonight, tonight. at 7 30 okay so your draft is before mine mine is tonight at 8 15 nice all right so uh, just so people know who were listening, um, my league was created right after Hurricane Katrina. No, right before Hurricane Katrina hit, so the power was out. So the league is called Hurricane Katrina. We're not making jokes about what happened. It's just what it it's is. It's just what it is. Yeah. All right. Ours is Boats and Holes. Boats and Trolls. Boats and Trolls? Boats and Trolls. Yeah. All right. What is your team name? Right now we're... In between names? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's just okay. say that. I, last night I came up with a with a, a decent candidate while we were at the, the Uno thing. Because we were talking about some shit, and I just happened to say I beat them tonsils up. 
And then I was like, yeah, that should be a good name. Beat them tonsils up. What about tonsil beaters? Or tonsil tickler. Ooh, I like that. Tonsil tickler. Tummy tickler is good too. Yeah. Did you guys see the the thing? I don't know if it's an actual news report or if it was just a meme somebody made up uh-huh. about the guy who got arrested for sneaking in people's houses and tickling their booty holes. No. <laughs> it was fucking amazing. All right. Let's keep that for the next show. I'm going to post that shit. Right. On, on yeah. Dope. So my team name is uh, – I. My team name has been the Gentleman Bandits for quite a while. Mm-hmm. At one point, we uh, we decided to go Spanish, so it was Los Señores uh, Banditos. But this year, because we uh, some of the guys in the in the league are big wrestling fans, we are Los Gentlemen Bandits, and we are our logo is based off of the Los Ingobernables logo from J- New Japan. Plex is totally fucking lost. Yeah, he has no idea. He has no about. idea who these. It's guys a are. faction in New Japan. It's a right. faction in New Japan. Another one of our team name. Uh, the guys he changed his name to the American Nightmare, nice. and he's got the Cody logo. But where it says Cody, he put the three stars where he's won three championships. Oh, it's nice. It's actually really dope. And then we got a press release today that the Rochester Royals have been sponsored by Rolls Royce. Yeah, but as always, fuck the Royals. Got it. Perfect. It's way too much information. You guys don't care. But the people who are no, listening really, to the podcast no. might. That's no, no, awesome. that's awesome. Right. Cool. Right. I love crazy fantasy football league. Yeah. That's why we. That's exactly right. why we're doing this. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about how we ended last season. How'd you do last season? I got to the playoffs and I ended third or fourth, I think, in the league. It was a nice run. I went up against, in the first round, I went up against the guy who won the championship inevitably and who was, he just dominated the whole league. He, from start to finish, he I think he lost like two games, but his average weekly score was like 120. Got it. That's that's pretty fucking solid. Dude. Yeah. I, mean, I was like. And that's a standard league or a PPR? Standard league. We don't do PPR. Damn. Yeah, dude. He was 120 mur- a week? He was murdering yeah, it. That's, his running backs must have been disgusting. Yeah. 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 No, he had, I can't even remember, but it was just disgusting. Actually, his birthday is today, so shout out Brad. He's Happy at, birthday, He's Brad. at my pool right now. Woo. He's at your pool at your house? Yeah. <laughs> While I'm here, wearing short shorts. Plex, the first Super thing short the shorts. first thing Plex said to me when I walked through the, the door today wasn't, hey, what's up, man? I haven't seen you. It was, your shorts are so short. And yeah. really, really pink. And no, they're orange, dude. Are you bl- colorblind? Dude, those are like... Are you, are you like the president? Are you, are you colorblind? Those are you like going to draw the wrong coral. colors? You got that yesterday, right? Yeah, that was dude, fucking that's amazing. Great. We'll move on. That's your boy. No, nah, that's your boy. No. That's, that's your cousin. Yeah. How, where did we end up last season? We ended up, I think, about third or fourth. We made the playoffs, ended up about third or fourth. Yeah, some shit. Sure. Yeah. Okay, and so we were pretty on par. Yeah, in yeah. the auction league, I also ended up around the same thing. I lost, yeah. just like you, to the person who ended up winning the championship. Yeah, yeah I didn't I didn't it, sniff the playoffs. It always feels league. better when you lose to the person who wins the championship. You're like, yeah, there was no way I'm going to do this. Yeah, it, hel- it helps a little. Yeah. Both our leagues are non – well, we do the auction league, but we're really not going to talk about that all that much just because our draft is tonight is the non-PPR one. So both of them are standard scoring, standard non-PPR. Scoring, non-PPR. You, who gets the special teams or kick return points in your league? The, the defense or the player who returns the, the No, kick? it's it's the, the player who returns the kick. And ours is – Ours is the player who returns the kick, and I think he also has some yardage stuff. Got it. Yeah. All know. right. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. All right. So we we will sprinkle in just every so often. We'll sprinkle in like you know subtle differences in draft strategy if it's a PPR non PPR. Yeah. But for the most part, we're gonna be doing just standard scoring on PPR. Absolutely. That's the two drafts. That you we know have. that pisses me off on the fantasy football on the the channel on SiriusXM. Those assholes. I'll turn in and it's always DFS and it's always like PPR stuff. And I'm like, yo, can we just talk about normal like standard? Drafts like and, and leagues yeah. and stuff. It's well, well, like you said about you know stepping up and yeah. being a big boy. Mm-hmm. That's what PPR is, man. Nah. Yeah. Eat, I, absolutely. Eat dick. At least half PPR. I mean, oh, like half point PPR. Yeah. Nah. I, I, I like. Yeah, yeah. I dig half point PPR. I think that that's like a sweet spot. You know what? Maybe maybe I'll I'll push the vote for next season with the owners. Where do you guys stand? I know where Plex stands. Where do you stand on when, where and when you draft kickers and defenses? Is we're not going to be really talking about kickers Bruh. and defenses. So let me tell you, last year when I drafted my kicker. I took him in the second to last round, and he was – he – god damn, who was it? He got hurt after game one, but he had like 20 points the first game. And then I picked up some other kicker who I can't even remember now, and he fucking murdered it all season long. So that's great, but honestly, wait for you for the last round. Like, dude, you can swap these idiots out left and right throughout the season. Except, except, watch your mouth. If you get Justin Tucker, you don't swap Justin Tucker. I want to draft Justin Tucker with our first pick. 
I, I and I get it. I get that you you might have wanted it, but I'm just telling you, you can swap these idiots out. And I'm totally all, kidding. I don't want all to season long. My first pick. All season long. So yes, I definitely, I definitely buy by and pick d- the last defenses two rounds. too. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I, I'm I'm unless we get like last year. I think we had what the the Rams defense. We started off with somebody else, and I think we picked up the Rams defense. So I want to say maybe week four or something. Yeah, unless you get a you unless you get a defense like that. You know, that's going to carry you. Yeah. I'm totally down with streaming defenses. But the Rams defense was really good for for us last year. So, this year, just total little side note on some of the research that I did. Matthew Berry from ESPN is uh-huh. actually really high on the Redskins defense. So okay. Just throwing that out there. That is pretty surprising. Yeah. I've heard a lot of things about the Saints defense this year going to be really good. Vikings, Rams, a couple of other guys. Yeah, like the standards got the Jags are going to be yeah. probably the first defense off the board. Probably in, in almost every draft, unless someone's going to go fanboy. But just so you know, Matthew Barry is a big Redskins fan. No, yeah, I know he is. So and so am I. It might but, be a little bit of a homer. Thing well, the for thing him. is, they draft they they went dr- defense heavy in this year's draft. So they got Darren Payne and they got uh, Jonathan Allen coming back from injury last year. Defense, just in general, is looking better. So we'll see. And, you know, so far in the preseason, they haven't given up a lot. I mean, obviously it's preseason, so nobody gives a shit. But they, they've looked pretty good when they're out there with the first team defense. So he might actually have hit on something on that. So that's just something for for you really, really nitty-gritty guys to, to think about. Skins so defense. You're a big Dolphins fan, right? Unfortunately, yes. Okay, what was Kiko's problem yesterday? Uh, he got... That was hilarious. He got confused and just ran to the wrong sideline. Yeah, did you see this? And then everybody no. was like patting him like, dude, uh, you're, you're on the over, wrong. Look over there. And he just turned around and started laughing Har- and Harbaugh, jogged Har- across. Har- Harbaugh looked at him and was like, yo, what are you doing here? Yeah. yeah just, it was quite funny. Drugs are bad, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he may or may not have been concussed. I mean, who knows? <laughs> there were a lot of jokes on Twitter Ooh. after that happened where he, they were like, yo, Kiko doesn't speak English. He just didn't know where to go. <laughs> who was it that I saw that uh, got a concussion last night? Oh, uh, Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram got concussed yes, last night. I saw that. So this when we get to tight ends, that's uh. Yeah, we'll that's... we'll talk about that. There's another big uh, injury uh, that happened last night. Too. Knees aren't supposed to go that way. Yeah, no, they're not. All right. So then, last little thing is just auction. You know, ours are both snake drafts, right? Yes. All right. So if you guys have never done an auction draft, what's a quick little tidbit you guys have as far as you know people who might be doing an auction? I know we have ours next week for the other league, but quick little tidbits for basic draft strategies as it comes to auction drafts well auction drafts in my opinion are a ton of fun you have the option of getting anybody you want you just gotta price them right so you gotta make you know get your tiers figure out how much money you're willing to spend on certain players depending on how the league is set up if it's a ppr non-ppr all that fun stuff but um yeah, I mean, there, there's it's a different strategy going into it. It, it all depends if you want to be really top-heavy, spend all your money on your top three players, and then go with value at the end of the draft, or if you want to try to sp- uh, spend your money kind of equally all throughout. I've seen both strategies work, but it's up to you on how you want to spend your money. All right, well, I can tell you that I've done it each and every way possible, and it's not worked out for me at all. I had, Anton- <laughs> had Antonio Brown last year. And I spent, I think, $58 on Antonio Brown, $54, $58. You spent like $70 on Antonio Brown. He I did was not. the I, third oh, highest player I did not spend board. $70 on Antonio Brown. I sent you, you, you spent close to it because he was, I think, the third highest player off the board. Okay, but it wasn't $70. We, uh, we're, I'm going to look that up. Close. I, I have the picture. eight if it wasn't 70 Okay. Well, either way, it didn't work out for me. And then I had, and I thought I had good value with Mariota, Delaney Walker combination, and Mariota shit the bed last year. I got great price for him, but... You know, shit like that didn't work out for me. So we'll see what I do this year with the All auction right. draft. Have you have have you done an auction draft? Uh, no, and I know and I know why I haven't done an auction draft because penalties be damned, I just spend all the money to buy all the players. No, well, there's still, there's still there, a cap. there's a cap limit, so you can't just go crazy. So like, you're, if, the, not if, if everybody would do, I if spend... the soft cap is two hundred dollars, we set like a hard cap at two oh five, and then for every dollar you between two hundred and two oh five, you got to put in like ten dollars into the pot. Hmm. So you still can't go over two oh five. Oh yeah, some some have a hard cap of one hundred or two hundred, and you can't go over that no matter what. Mm. I did it in a way where kind of like basketball, where you have a luxury tax. If you yeah. if you want to go over the two hundred, you can, but it's going to cost you real money. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it doesn't that doesn't necessarily work that way. Yeah, um, you, you can't just bid. You know, I want nine million dollars for Le'Veon Bell. You can't do that. You have you to take him. 
But I yeah, will, yeah, he's horrible. But I will tell you that draft is infinitely more fun to do than sitting around yeah, doing a fucking times. snake draft. I, I, once you do an auction draft, you will hesitate doing a regular snake draft. I think that look for all of you guys are right. Like auction drafts are pretty fun. I just honestly, man, my life standards are so much easier. These snakes, like yo, listen, it's kind of plain Jane. Same same thing with PPR. Like I actually, have to totally change my. I'll I'll disagree with you there. The auction draft actually goes quicker. That's cool. You can be wrong. Than the than the snake draft. No, 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 no. It actually goes quicker. It goes yeah? much quicker. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Especially the first couple of years we did our snake draft, we had guys not paying attention. They would spit out names of guys that were drafted three rounds early. Bro, so it this, took forever. It it was fun. We had to implement like a fucking like a like clock, a timer, like, yeah. a, like so a draft clock. We have we have a timer. draft clock. But there, last year we had one guy in our league try to take C.J. Anderson three times. And he had already been taken. Yeah, that, that's the problem. And in the auction draft, it seems it moves a little quicker. It's a lot more action going on. Like I said, you can bid on any player you want. So you don't sit around for So there's, there is no draft winning. order. It's just, oh, we start off no, with the yeah, number one no. player? The, no, the, the draft order is who is, like, it's, it's my turn to put up the player. Gotcha. To put the, yeah. put the guy up for auction. And there's a lot more strategy because uh, you can throw out a name of a player, let's say, that is pretty good, but you don't want anything to do with him. So Just to you, drive up the yeah, price and you make can people. Throw out, let's say your first player is Aaron Rodgers, and you throw him out there, and you let the piranhas spend their money and 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 bet, bid and bid and bid, and then you're sitting back and just waiting. Yeah. Or you can actually throw the name out of somebody you really want, knowing that I don't care people, how much I'm going to spend, well, I'm going to get him. Or in the in the first round, you know, people are going to be a little bit more conservative with their money, so you throw somebody out there, and like they're not going to blow their load on. On, on on Aaron, so say say take Aaron Rodgers, right? So take Aaron Rodgers and you throw him out there. Somebody's like, "Yo, I'm not gonna in the first my first pick. I'm not gonna spend twenty dollars on Aaron Rodgers." So you know, maybe you might get him at a lesser value than what normally is yeah, happening. That, that happens all the time. People cool. people are a little concerned awesome. with their money, but it's it's a totally different strategy. Okay. This is just you know you're not just sitting there waiting for your pick and then like, oh hey, uh, you know Mike Michael Thomas is there, sure. You get to draft anybody you want. If you're a big Dolphins fan, if you're a big Pittsburgh Steelers fan, you can draft their whole damn team if you really wanted to. And that's, to me, more appealing than okay. just sitting there and waiting for right. your... Uh, this all sounds family. very enticing. It's just I'm super it is, it is. fucking busy. And... All right. Well, all right. I think it's time that we get down to the nitty gritty. All right. So this is what we're going to do with the show today. We're going to do quarterbacks and running backs first. And then we're going to get into wide receivers, tight ends after. We're going to hit you with like our main tiers, some sleepers, you know, some bus predictions, and we will touch a little bit on who you might want to pick if you are doing PPR versus non-PPR. Uh, and that's going to be basically, you know, the format for what we're going to do. Feel free at the end of the, you know, whenever you listen to us, uh, whenever you listen to the show, send us an email, let us know how your draft went, let us know about how your picks go, you know, and we're going to do probably in the middle of the season, we're going to do like a mid-week, mid-year recap type of thing seeing how you know all the shit that we predicted is going so far and then we'll do a end of the season wrap up so cool. that's going to be uh the plan so we want to start with running backs right running backs is running no, backs starting with QBs let's do Q- yeah let's start with QBs right. so about the QBs i mean anybody that knows anything about fantasy football i think they know who the top quarterback is right it's Aaron Rodgers Kirk Cousins. i mean yeah yeah <laughs> not even yeah sure but i do like Kirk Cousins this year we'll talk about him a little more uh, later on, the tough part is that he plays a pretty tough schedule this year. Aaron Rodgers he plays the NFC South, sorry the NFC West with the Rams, uh, Seattle whose defense is not that great, but uh, the Cardinals and all that stuff. He lost Jimmy Graham who had ten touchdowns last year. He lost uh, Jordy Nelson who was his favorite receiver at the yep. time. Who's now and, he's now going to be David Carr's favorite receiver. Yeah, probably Derek Carr. Whatever. And um, all the same shit. He. Uh, I mean, Devontae Adams had the history last year of the concussion, so who knows how that's going to work out. But And Ty Montgomery got hurt yesterday, too. And Ty Montgomery got hurt. Well, I mean, he's going to be kind of in that running back rotation. So, But, I mean, I mean, it's Aaron Rodgers. The guy slings the ball all up and down the field. He scores points. I mean, regardless of what defense he's playing, he's, you know, the number one guy. Yeah, so I've never thought of Aaron Rodgers as uh, the number one guy after he broke up with Olivia Munn. I know, what an idiot. Uh, that's the dumbest move he can do, and anybody that stupid cannot be the number one quarterback. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, he doesn't get fantasy points for he does in my hot world. chicks that he... Yeah, no, he definitely does in my world. That he, Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's disgusting. All right, so 
Aaron Rodgers' ADP is 27 right now. So that means if you're in a 10-team league, you're picking him in the right end, at the of, end the, of the third no, round. beginning of third the third round, round yeah. right? Yeah, beginning of the third round. No. Middle. No. middle yeah, middle, more middle, yeah. yeah. Middle One of the third to 10, round. 10 to 20, 20 to 30. Yeah, so, so at the end, end, of, end of, the of the third round, the like third I round. said, okay, we'll you fucking yeah, numbskulls. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Do you think that that's a good place to pick him up at the end of the third round? Hell no. I am a big uh, proprietor, I guess. Proponent. Proponent, sure, of uh, drafting quarterbacks late. There's especially nowadays. There's so many. There's so good much depth quarterbacks. at quarterback. Yeah. yeah. I like to wait till rounds eight, nine, ten uh-huh. to start drafting quarterbacks. Okay. As good as Aaron Rodgers is, third round. There's way too much talent in other places to be spending that pick on him. Well, let me tell you that after the top one, two, three, four, after the top five. It drops significantly, significantly on ADP. Like you're going from 27 and Aaron Rodgers to like the early 40s, and then it drops to like 62. Yeah. Well, here's but here's the bigger question: What's the drop off after the top five in points scored? Brady to Wentz. That's that's yeah, your drop off right not there. That much. Between 43 and Car- and 62 and Carson Wentz. That's the position. That's no, the ADP. Yeah, well, he's, talking about, he's yeah, talking about he's talking about points. points. Like how many points? Ah, okay. So you want to see that? We can pull those up. Yeah, if, for me, it's not a drop off that significant that I'm willing to spend a third or fourth round pick on a quarterback. Yeah, I think that's what we've seen consistently over the last few years. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's crazy though because it seems like, with the exception of last year where Matthew Stafford had a a good year in the beginning, and then we ended up with Russell Wilson, and he really carried us through the mm-hmm. end of the season. The prior years, with the exception of the Brady trade, quarterbacks always kind of been a difficult position for for Plex and I. We end up streaming quarterbacks a lot, uh, just because it, you know, we we don't tip since we wait so long, we don't uh-huh. get one of those top tier guys. But uh, then we pulled off, like I said, the trade that almost broke our fantasy football league, the Brady McFadden trade. Hashtag never forget. And uh, then last year we ended up with Russell Wilson. And where did Russell Wilson end up ranked last year in fantasy quarterbacks? Uh, and last time I checked, he was um, number one. Number one, yeah. yeah. And who was number two, surprisingly enough? Uh, number two, surprisingly enough, was Cam Newton. So here's the thing. Cam Newton gets a bad rap for being inaccurate and not being, you know, like Kelvin Benjamin just shit all over Cam Newton during this offseason. And somehow he ended up the number two fantasy quarterback. Well, that's because rushing yards for quarterbacks is huge. Cam Newton last year was second in fantasy points. He's been a He's been in the top four for quarterbacks in five out of the last seven years. And it's because he runs for six, seven hundred yards a season. Yeah. And for quarterbacks, that's such a big part of their game. Guys like that, that it's huge for fantasy. Yeah, dude. And not only that, but he he vultures touchdowns from his running backs. So he's gonna end up with you know five or six rushing touchdowns along with the eight hundred yards and however many touchdowns he mm-hmm. manages to throw. And this year, we really like Cam Newton also because he's getting his favorite target back, which we'll get we'll get to a little later on. Well, Cam led the Panthers with 754 rushing yards. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's ridiculous. And 22 passing touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be surprised if he led, led the team in rushing again this year. McCaffrey looks like a beast so far. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, he looks good so oh, far. Yeah, I, haven't, I haven't watched, really full disclosure, I've not watched any preseason football. Uh, all of my preparation was done yeah. the last few days reading just ESPN shit. So He, he looks fantastic, oh. and Cam Newton looks like he's – Ready to give him the yep. ball a shit ton of times. Are you? Do you know who Cam Newton's offensive coordinator is this season? Mm-mm. Who is it? North Turner. Oh yes. Okay. North Turner loves to throw the ball to the running backs. Yeah. So you're gonna definitely see a lot of passing from Cam to Chris McCaffrey. And so. McCaffrey's, you know, excels at that. So that should be a good combination for them. I mean, yeah. That should absolutely. be very exciting. Okay. So are we saying that? Okay. We already went over Aaron Rodgers as as number one. I'm gonna be in consensus. I've looked over your list, and it's pretty much in line with what I have. You too? Yeah, yeah. All right. Aaron Rodgers, number one guy. Number two. I would say Russell Wilson. Okay. You're actually absolutely right, according to uh, some of my stats. Yeah, he was number number one last year. This year, he has the second easiest schedule uh, for quarterbacks. The problem is, well, it's not a problem, but for him, it's actually good news. His defense looks like it's not going to be nearly as good as it was in the previous years. So he's going to be he's going to he's going to be throwing the throwing ball a lot, trying to get points. Lot. Now the problem is they lost Jimmy Graham, like I said, ten touchdowns mm-hmm. last year. Um, they lost uh, Richardson, the other receiver who had a lot of catches. Paul Richardson went to the Redskins. That's mm-hmm. right. So I mean, you know, it's a lot of production that he's losing, but mm-hmm. 
He I still has Doug Baldwin. Do you, but yeah. do you think that he loses a step because they were that because of Perry Penny? My bad. No, no. I mean, uh, I Carson, think Rashad Penny's going to be good for him because he did what he did the last couple of years without much of a running game mm-hmm. ever since Marshawn was gone. You know, they Kristen Michael and all these dudes that they toss around in there. So if Rashad Penny uh, works out as, as he's projected to. I think that's can, that can only help Russell Wilson. Yeah, and, and the projected starter right now, Carson's actually not looking too bad himself. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to hurt him that much. I mean, his, he, the problem that they're going to have is his offensive line. Is, his offensive line is yeah, garbage. Trash. Hell but it was yeah. trash last year, and he was number one because he yeah, had but, to. And th- now you're now you're saying that he's got a, he's got he's got a shitty offensive line plus and, le- and his fewer weapons. Arm. Yeah, fewer yeah. weapons. I, and I, he has and he has his first offensive coordinator change in his whole tenure at in Seattle. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to matter. I think he's going to yeah. end up in the top three or four at quarterback, and you know he, he's just going to put up crazy well, numbers. Provided Wilson's offense line can keep him Healthy. in one piece, yeah. A statistical repeat of 2017 is well within his range of possibilities. Absolutely. And he's another one who ran for a shitload of yards, ran for a few yep. touchdowns, and then threw a bunch of touchdowns. And he's far, far more accurate than Cam. So. You know, I, listen, I really like the, the Russell Wilson, Doug Baldwin combination myself. I was, we had Doug Baldwin last year. He balled out for us. So he's he's ha- he's been a thousand yard receiver two years in a row. And you got to give some of that credit to Russell Wilson, man, because he puts the, he throws a good ball and they those two guys have a really good connection. So, yeah, I and mean, we'll talk about that when we get to uh, Doug Baldwin a little later. But yeah, uh, his go to move is scramble, 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 heave the ball deep to Doug Baldwin. Yeah, yeah pretty much. All right. Number All right. three. Number three. Now, this is a little tricky for me. A lot of people are going to say Cam Newton. I'm going to say Cam Newton. I'm going to say Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Yeah, fuck you. Tom I mean, Brady, listen. Dude. Tom Brady, first of all, I hate to say it because I am a Dolphins fan. Uh-huh. Tom Brady's Tom Brady, man. You, you, you can't. You pick Tom like, Brady over Deshaun Watson also. I'm going to. Uh, yes, gotta, yes. Gotta, in a heartbeat. I got to shake my balls. In a, a heartbeat. Bit. Yeah, yeah. Tom Brady's yeah. greatest quarterback of all time. Yeah. Tom Brady. And listen. And he plays in a super weak division. We're not a good defense. The Jets' defense is not good. Buffalo's defense is not oh, going to be gonna good this mash. year. That six games, which is about for most people half of the fantasy season, okay, that he's just going to ball out. I mean, Tom Brady is Tom Brady, even though he does struggle here in Miami for some weird reason. Yeah, Tom Brady for me, he's going to put up points. He's got Edelman coming off of that suspension. He's got Hogan. He's got Gronk there. He's got James White catching the ball. He's got Rex Burkhead catching the ball. He's going to be fine. He's going to be. In the top three or four. And only that, he always manages to find like that one random rookie or random free agent that they bring in who no one ever heard of. And all of a sudden, he makes him into a thousand yard yeah. receiver. So, you know what I love is that because of Tom Brady, everyone's really super high on Chris Hogan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm very high on Chris Hogan. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Because you're high as hell. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. We'll see how high I am when he, uh, when he's right. the number one receiver on that team. Number four, Cam Newton. Okay. I, I mean, think we, I, I, I disagree. I think Cam should be three, but okay. Yeah, I mean, right. it, it, it's arguable also. I mean, a lot of it also depends on how your league is set up. Mm-hmm. Um, Cam Newton can easily be number three. He, last year, he was number two. He runs for a lot of yards, like we said. He, You know, he has Greg Olson coming back. And, you know, it's it's easy to see him being number two or three or four. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's going to be up there. He's yeah. been up there every year for for a ton of years. Yeah, the only, the only issue I have with Cam is, I mean, he lost Kelvin Benjamin, who was like his... His the guy boy. who could go up and get the ball for him. Yeah. You have Olsen. You have Devin Funches, who I'm expecting to have a good year. I well, love De- them at Michigan. Devin Funches is, a, to me, a carbon copy of Kelvin Benjamin. But he's not. as Kelvin Benjamin is much faster. Mm-hmm. Devin Funches, Kelvin Benjamin is not much faster than him. Devin Funches I hate was a, to break it Devin to Funches was a tight end that got converted to receiver. He's not exactly a burner. He'll be fine. Yeah. No, listen. I, I like him. I, I definitely draft him. I just, you know, we'll okay. see. I, I Listen, I, I'm high on Cam Newt. I'm Cam also, he's being taken in the lo- late fifth round in most uh, mock drafts. So, I mean, if you can get him in the late fifth round, hell yeah. Like, I absolutely. I don't think he's going to, in most, in either our leagues, I don't think he's going to last that long. But you guys have keepers this year. We don't. This is a refresh year for us. So, How often do you refresh? Two years. Every so, we have, we have keepers for two years, and then we refresh. We'll see. Yeah, my keeper last year was David Johnson. That worked out real well. Yeah, that, that, that hurts. All right. All right so, so, who runs out the top five? Well, for me, if we're doing tiers, that would be the end of my okay. So tier, my tier one, yeah, yeah. Oh man, no. I, th- I I have a big group of guys in tier two because for me, the drop off from there, it's not huge, but everybody that I have in my tier two kind of for me feels like Third they're row. all, That's the drop off. they're all like 
very similar. Like the guys from five Still, to nine or ten. You wouldn't are, put Deshaun Watson in, in that top tier. This I would. Is, this is the problem I have with Deshaun Watson. Okay, he's the sample size is too it's small. Way too small. I, okay, I get it. But it's like six games where he lit the world on fire. Now guys have tape on him. They have that is the most. To, overplayed fucking excuse of all time. Do you know who they have tape on? Aaron Rodgers. Do you know who they have tape on? Tom Brady. <laughs> you're, talking, you know you're, you're talking about <laughs> Hall of Famers. It, are you willing to put Deshaun Watson in the Hall of Fame right now? No, but nobody Those guys are Hall of Fame. Those guys are Hall of Those guys are Hall of Fame. Those guys are Hall of Fame. Those guys are Hall of Fame. Dude, come on, man. Get the fuck out of here. Tape. They have tape on me. Yeah, right. congratulations. They have tape on everybody else in the NFL Listen, too. Not only you know is what he coming off I gotta, of ACL I got to go with half on that one. Like, you no. know what happens? You know, it's the pressure. I get it. Sometimes people crack under pressure, and that's absolutely what happens. So that's the same thing they say about pitchers. When pitcher comes off hot, everyone's like, yeah, 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 everyone. You know, but then they say, oh, they know about him already. They got tape on him. So now, no, you know what happens? He gets a little taste of that limelight, and then he starts to get into his own head. I think I think what it comes down to in all sports, sports are not a game solely based on talent and ability. Sports are based on mm-hmm. adjustments. Can you make adjustments to what the other team is doing to you? Can you adapt? Can you you know, reinvent yourself, you know, even if it's tweaks here and there mm-hmm. just to get, you yeah. know, get your footwork right, get no, that throw absolutely. out earlier, whatever the case may be, you know, change your your pitch mechanics, whatever. You have to adjust. And that's what we're going to see this year, whether Deshaun Watson has that in him or not. Yeah. But and talent-wise and ability-wise, he's he, oh, he's, he so should he, prove. He look, can be elite. if Deshaun Watson is going at a rate of fuck, what is it, 41, so he's going, wow, he's going higher than Tom Brady by two – by two picks, but forty-one, so top, top of the fourth round, right? Yeah. So if he's going there, well, that's top of the fourth round. Remember, top of the fourth round in a ten-team league. If you're playing yeah. a twelve-team league, he's in the third round. Yeah. Way too rich for my blood. For a guy that's coming off an ACL injury, and for a guy that's really only played six games last year, yeah, he played amazing, but he put up stats that are not gonna be duplicated again. He put up, I mean, amazing stats in that time. So if you're in a ten team league, and I know I was I was kind of listening to you, but uh, if you're in a ten team league, he's going actually in the, as the first pick in the fifth round. That's my bad. Okay, that's my bad. Okay. So if you're taking him, in the, and same thing with Tom Brady. Tom Brady's going in the top of the fifth round. So if you're okay, taking so, him, so in a twelve ten in a twelve team league, he's going top fourth? end of the fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah God, about I can't four, do that four, math. That four, quick. Five. That's, that's blacks. Yeah, that's about four, 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 five, four, six is where he's going in a twelve yeah. man team in mm-hmm. a twelve team league uh, draft. That's too high for me. I mean, way too high for a guy that has a couple of question marks now. He has elite talent mm-hmm. with his arm and his legs. Okay. He can run for, you know, okay. six, 700 yards in a season. That's great. He actually has a favorable matchup, too. If you look at his uh, his schedule, he mm-hmm. plays the Browns, the Colts, and the Jets during most leagues' playoff weekends. So, mm-hmm. week, you know, 13, 14, 15, or, four, or 14, 15, 16, mm-hmm. whatever it is, he plays some really weak teams. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it could totally... Help him out. Yeah, and, and he's got. I mean, he's got DeAndre for his price. Yeah, absolutely for his price. For me, way too rich. Now, if he were to fall to the end of the fifth, maybe beginning of the sixth round in in a certain draft, then I would say, okay, well, the value is yeah. there. And I think that needs to be said to the, to anybody listening. So these draft and these ADPs and all these lists that you have, listen, it's it's like Mike used to say, everyone's great. It was Mike, right? Everyone's yeah. great until they get punched in the mouth. Yeah. Listen, the first time the guy on your board gets taken, you've got to adjust. Like It's, it's, it's the same thing. It's the well, same thing. You always same have thing to as, adjust. Yeah, adjust, Adjustments and, yep. and adaptability is what wins you these leagues. Which is why if I, if, we, if I can give anybody any advice, and I shouldn't, by the way, but if I could give anyone any advice, it's to create tiers. Tiers and round, and round schedules. So look, if there's a guy who you feel is in a top tier and he's still there at a certain round you, you take, take him. him absolutely it doesn't matter yeah unless you regardless of the position dying because you have yeah, zero man. running backs you take the guy yeah and if you if you have zero running backs at that time then either you've done it purposefully by taking all and i've seen people take all well, wide receivers for the first three or four picks yeah. and then go running back which is fine dude if that's what you can do if you can plan that but in that sense listen if you're not if you're if you mean if you were in absolute need of a running back then you're not planning correctly correct. in the beginning correct i agree Thank you. Yeah, I mean it's 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 all tier based. It's all coming down to the value of the player that you're drafting. Last year, uh, we had the fifth pick in our keeper uh-huh. league. We xed out. Oh, there's no way Leonard Fournette's falling to falling to us. Damn! All of a sudden, who was it? Gronk got picked up. The pick before Bra- us or something. Brandon so Cooks. In, in, Brandon, Brandon, Brandon Cooks and Gronk went up. ahead of fucking Leonard Fournette. Yeah, and, and all I, of a sudden, we're sitting at five, and Leonard Fournette's there, and we were like. 
Holy Yo, shit. I like, got butt ass naked and moonwalk to the board to put Leonard yeah, Fournette's yeah, name. Absolutely. It, it's all it, everybody has their different tiers. For me, it's about value. I don't it's not that I don't think Deshaun Watson's gonna be a good quarterback. Mm-hmm. It's just for the price, to me, he's not worth it. Cool. Let's All go right. to number six. No, so instead of oh. instead of just six, let's just rattle off some of the the main names that we have. I on, like this. On, I like this idea. See, this is what we're doing with, with this with this podcast right now. We're doing the same thing you should do in a draft. You should always change it up. Yeah, because okay. if we if we go one by one, yeah, like we're this, gonna we're gonna, gonna be, be like nine o'clock. Right. So hour. I'm gonna give you the next couple of guys behind Deshaun Watson. For okay, me. I have Kirk Cousins this year. I think he's okay. gonna be great. Yeah, yeah. I have uh, the way Andrew Luck has been looking in preseason. I think he's going to be fantastic. But so many people have he's coming off an injury, and so many people have tape on him. I understand, but he's but he's have you seen what he's done, done it. when he's healthy? <laughs> right. He's done it. I just needed to the use Sean the excuse, Watson man. Hasn't just, let done me it. let me use the fucking excuse, right? Let me use it. Yeah. All right. After, so Luck. Yeah, it's going to be Kirk Cousins. Luck. I like Matthew Stafford this year. Okay. Really pass heavy offense. He ended up seventh in fantasy points last year. Mm-hmm. No reason why he can't do it again. He's, mm-hmm. I think, my number eighth guy. After that, I would say, surprisingly enough, I have Philip Rivers here. God, man, that guy, he is old every, man River, honestly. Every year, that guy gets drafted. I think now he's going in about the end of the eighth or so beginning yeah, of the I'll, ninth. I'll pull up his ADP right now. And every year, he ends up as a top 10 quarterback. 10, every year. 105. He's up he, from last week. He's up one spot, 105. So if you're in a 10 team league, that's the, 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 the middle, middle of, the of, the 11, of the 11th round. Yeah, it's only yeah, the 11th so, round. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, I'd rather wait those five rounds and not pick up Deshaun Watson. No, yeah. And pick up Phillip Rivers, who last year, you Who's know. a lock for 4,000 yards, a lock yeah. for 30 touchdowns. And his disgusting throw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His, he, but that's what I was saying, guys. So the, the drop-off between, yeah, there you go. There's all the ADP. The drop-off between those top five guys is so far that if you're willing to go and get uh, Andrew Luck or a Matthew Stafford and still be okay with that, dude, you're going to be able to, to clear up a couple, uh, at least one pick where you can fill in yeah. with a, wide, a good wide receiver, a Absolutely. good running back. Like it, it, it works out really well now, for you. One name that we haven't discussed, and the reason I'm starting to bump them down a is little is no, Wentz. Uh, okay. And the only reason is because there's been rumors about him not being ready for the Prime start time? of the season. Yeah. Okay. So that to me kind of bumps him down. If he's gonna miss two or three games, uh-huh. um, that's why I kind of have him down now at like my number 10, 11 spot. Okay, it's because of the injuries. If not, he would probably be somewhere around six or seven. For okay, me. Um, you know he had the a other the other thing year. about the other thing about that too is that you know Nick Foles won these guys a Super Bowl game. So what yeah, happens you, if he, you can't just give up on one? They're yeah. comfortable with him. They're comfortable starting Nick Foles for the first three, four games of the season. Yeah, they're not gonna they're not gonna rush Wentz back. Yeah. So it's not, I'm not saying he's in in jeopardy of losing his starting job, but if they're gonna you know slow play him to come back, then you're unless you're losing they come off value. the first two games they look like garbage, and then, right, right. But and that, that hasn't been the case so far in the preseason. But the preseason is the preseason, right? Right. Yeah. T- okay. Talking about Breeze, actually, I have him pretty low this year. I really, think I have him about twelve. Oh, I had him seven. So he he would be like the top, kind of in the top of my third tier mm-hmm. uh, quarterbacks. Last year, I mean, listen, he's great, but last year he had a big decline mm-hmm. in yards and uh, touchdowns. He only had two top ten finishes in in a per week basis. So only two times last year he actually finished in the top ten for quarterbacks. And I don't know. There's nothing telling me that. Do you think some of his star rising and people still thinking that they should draft him high right now? He's being picked up in the the as, as, he's being picked up at sixty. So that's the yeah so yeah that, that last round. of the sixth to, to round. Me, first it's of the seventh more round. Yeah. it's more of a yeah. his because name. of his name. Yes, exactly. And do you think it's because of Kamara Ingram and Michael Thomas? That doesn't hurt. That no, definitely doesn't absolutely hurt. Not, but I'm but, just saying. I mean, listen, he has the opportunity. He has the weapons yeah. to, you know. Be right up there. Yeah. Be one okay. of the top seven, right. eight quarterbacks. I just but isn't isn't Ingram out or four games? Yeah. Four games, but still, then they qu- one. That's a quarter of the season. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, what I do about- like Plex leading this this charge of rankings. Like yeah. they're they're pretty in line. So let's keep going. Go ahead. What about uh Matt Ryan? What do you got, Matt Ryan? That's right, another well, Matt, big name. R- Matt Ryan's actually one of my breakout guys this year. I have him a little low on the list, but more. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you can really call him a sleeper, but I have yeah. him a little low. It's on weird my to list. do, but you can definitely call him a sleeper. Yeah, I mean. The guy had a practical MVP season two, se- you know, two years ago. Has the same weapons on the team except for Calvin Ridley, who they drafted pretty high this year. Really good college receiver. So he ha- has even more weapons. Last year, he had a brand new offensive coordinator. This year, I think, another year under this guy. You know, he has a chance to really break out into maybe the top 10 
And he's going, I think, he's somewhere like the 14th or 15th quarterback coming off the boards in like the 11th, 12th round. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't draft him as a starter, but as a backup, absolutely. Well, well you, it's wait, funny you draft, because you'd draft backup QBs. That's so, like yeah, that's like the it third. It, dep like, it depends on, on yeah, who's left yeah, on the board. Yeah, I'm looking like you know third to last or fourth to last yeah, round. Yeah, like round okay. yeah right before 13, right before 14, kicker, something like that. Yeah. So he's being picked. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, Matt Ryan is being picked 104th. So that's 11th, the beginning of the fourth pick in the 11th round. Now I'll tell you what, what. What was uh? What was Philip Rivers getting picked? 105, 105 right 105. after Matt Ryan. Yeah. I would rather have Philip Rivers and yeah. and as a starter. Oh, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to tell you another thing that I will say about Matt Ryan is I on a couple of ESPN lists that I saw, they he's being predicted to be a bust this year. Absolutely. So uh, without strong mobility or an elite arm, Ryan is at his best with a clean pocket or delivering with anticipation through a big hit. Ryan's touchdown rate in 2017 was third lowest in his 10-year career. And his QBR, his lowest since 2009. And yeah. outside of Julio, Facts. outside of Julio Jones, who's he throwing the ball to? I don't well, know. He's got uh, Muhammad he Sanu. He's got Devante two. Yeah, he's that's... got two running backs that catch the yeah, ball. Yeah, like crazy. Sure. He's got, like I said, Calvin Ridley, who's, in my opinion, the number one receiver coming out of uh, college football. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, he's got Austin Hooper, Hooper as his as his tight end. And I have Justin no Hardy. idea who that is. Yeah, okay. yeah I'm, I'm not worried about you know, just but he's got Muhammad Sanu. He's got. I mean, Mohamed Sanu is uh, he's a decent possession dread. receiver. Is, right, Taylor, is Taylor Gabriel still there? Because I know Taylor had a, Gabriel left. I had a lot of high hopes for that dude, and no, he, he shit the bed last year. High hopes. No, he's out of there. But really quick, where's he at? Um, good question. Who knows? Okay, so then okay. <laughs> uh, I actually think I, I think Taylor Gabriel he went, he, not he ended, being drafted he, this year. I think he ended up getting injured wherever he went. Anyway, not nothing significant, but he's injured. But really quick, right? What we were talking to before, I remember mm -hmm. Philip Rivers. Then uh, Matt Ryan, Philip Rivers last year had was top five in attempts, yards, and touchdowns. Okay, and you know he's a no, guy that's arguing on you this. Yeah, like, no, no, like I'm, you're I'm just... just saying Matt Ryan might be a bust, but he's going to be my backup quarterback anyways. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. I don't think I had a backup quarterback last year. I think you know what? I, no, I did. I had a backup quarterback, and then I dropped him towards like the end of the season after everyone had gone through their. Um, there or the, and stuff. another another thing and I did it one season it worked out was that I picked up two pretty good quarterbacks and then I just held on to one as trade bait for the whole season waited for one of them to go down and then just kind of poached if I could I've always wanted to it's been a pipe dream to just in the first like three rounds four rounds take like the top quarterbacks and then just start trading them off you during the season absolutely do that <laughs> as a matter of fact I'm gonna invite you to my league so you can just <laughs> donate money to my league please do that I wouldn't do it, but I mean, it's always been something like, yo, just pick everybody up. Because these guys aren't getting picked up until like the third, fourth yeah, round. Well, there's so like that. many yeah. of them. There's so this many year you're of super them. deep at QB. Go ahead. Yeah. And I think, well, you know, rounding off the last couple of picks for me would be even maybe a little ahead of Matt Ryan would mm -hmm. be uh, Big Ben. Okay. Are you, the concussion doesn't scare you at all? Concussion doesn't scare me. Because he's dumb already? No, nah, he's got a shit ton of weapons. Uh, yeah, I mean, you have has... Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell. You, you no, no, no. I get, I get it. That guy. I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah, you haven't said one name that I've that I've been that I've been looking for. You're gonna say Garoppolo? No, God, no. No, Garoppolo. okay. Who are you gonna say? Alex Smith. I I I'd take a flyer on Jimmy Garoppolo. I, I mean, think, not I, not I as a starter. I would take a flyer starter. on Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah, as a backup. Yeah, but not not as a starter. Smith. Okay, this is my issue with Smith. He put he's a up, redskin, and he put up career numbers last year that I don't think he's gonna duplicate. Okay. I mean, listen, he had better weapons, in my opinion, in Kansas City than he does now. And it was a career year for him. Don't sleep on Adrian Peterson. Peterson. Got a badge. Okay. All right. So I guess we're going to have a inter inter uh, team fight this no, year. No, every. So obviously, I'm a Redskins fan, Plex is a Dolphins fan. Every year, we end up somehow with one of each. Mm -hmm. And every year, every time one of them doesn't perform, we yell at the other one about how badly his boy sucked. Yeah. And it never. It's it's not you know it's just part of the routine. We okay. had uh, Lamar Miller for two oh, years who oh was just God. fucking hot garbage, and then last year we decided, hey, let's spend our fourth round pick on Jordan, Jordan Reed, Reed, who played two games. Yeah, gotcha. and that will never happen again. Never. Yeah. All right. So Jordan Reed, don't draft him. That's a, that's, that's our tight end talk. We've rounded out the the top fifteen. Yeah. You want to run them, run down your top fifteen? We've we've kind of in agreement between one or two rankings. We've yeah. kind of agreed for most of it. Well, so I, go. Before we do that, I want to talk about two just guys that I think could be really big uh, boom players this year. Okay. Case Keenum, one of them going to Denver has a lot of good weapons in Denver, and Jared Goff. Jared Goff, buddy. Yeah. So okay. when we did our war room, because we do that, when we did our war room a few nights ago, 
he was like, he's like, oh, Jared Goff, whatever. And then we started putting up like his stats from last year. Mm-hmm. Mind you, a lot of that is Todd Gurley because Todd Gurley also had this huge career year. And to Plex's mm-hmm. point, he doesn't think that's uh, duplicable. You don't think that Todd Gurley is going to be able to do it again? I'm just asking. The, well, Not- no, with the numbers he put up last year, no. Can he end up top three? Absolutely. Will okay. he pull up the no- 2,000 wow. yards that he did last year? And I think it was something like... Uh, 20 touchdowns? No, mm-hmm. I don't think he's doing that. So again. Jared Goff is, is getting picked around 106. He's dropped off two. He's dropped off two points or two two picks, two spots, two spots in the last week. But yeah, he's getting picked 106. So that's 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 almost like I mean right he's, got, he's got Brandon, he's got Brandon he's got Brandon Cooks back though, so he's got his deep threat back, which should open up the field yeah, more Ro- for Robert Woods and Cooper Cup are great. Uh, obviously, Gurley catches the ball really well out of the backfield. He's just he, – it's his completion average. It's – his completion average is just kind of like meh. Man, yeah, no, I agree. But he ended up last year 10th in yards and 5th in touchdowns. Mm-hmm. You know, can he do that again? Maybe not because, like you said, a lot of it was tough. remember Gurley, Wat- but... Watkins isn't there. Yeah, but they got Cooks back. Yes. So that kind of that kind of okay. washes. Yeah. You, think, you think that washes one hand, one hand washes yeah, the other? Yeah, okay. I think so. And, he, and here's the thing – here's the other thing about Jerry Goff. The Rams' defense is disgusting. They turn the ball yeah. over a ton. So he's going to get a lot of like those cheapy drives where they start to drive at the 25, 30 mm-hmm. yard line. And that's just, you know, going to free up the opportunities for him to okay. throw a little swing pass over I'm, to Gurley. I, listen, guys, I you don't need to sell me on that. I'm, I'm really like, I wouldn't even say he was a crazy sleeper. But what about Patrick McCombs? Um, I don't know. I think he's going to struggle a little. I, I, yeah. I'd rather have Jimmy Garoppolo. And you I'd know, I'd rather have Jimmy okay. Garoppolo. By and far. I haven't heard you guys talk about Bedak. No, uh, Dak? no, he's no not Dak a, for me. He, uh, nobody's, he's nobody's not a Dak fan, and, Dak, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not drafting a Cowboy. Okay. No, so. yeah. For, for me, the, Dak just doesn't throw the ball enough. Okay. It's a run-heavy team. Unless Lou wants to trade as easy. Yeah, and, and, and really, I mean, who are his receivers over there? <laughs> like, can you name one? I mean, in I can da- name him, obviously, but... In Dallas? Yeah. His number one receiver is... Michael Irvin. Alan Hearns. His number two receiver... Hey, don't sleep, Alan Hearns. Come on. From the... from the. Let me ask you this. Terrence Williams is the number two guy. I'm looking at this. Um... A guy being picked in the end of the twenty second round, if that's a thing, <laughs> is is Ryan Tannehill. No, that's all we have to say. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Moving on. All right, let's go to running backs. Right. All right, so running backs, running backs, running backs. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna go our top start. five like we did last time, and then we'll we'll follow down into the tiers. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. So number one running back. My number one running back. I love this guy. He gives me massive manwood. Le'Veon Bell. Okay. I mean, it's hard to argue. I know Todd Gurley last year was the number one guy. Uh-huh. Le'Veon Bell was number two. Okay. But I mean, it's hard to argue with his production. He does mm-hmm. it year in, year out. Okay. All right. I, I, so here's my question, uh-huh. just as far as Le'Veon. And again, we call him Le'Veon as well. We don't own Le'Veon. Okay. Whatever. The moral of the story is, what do you think his? Con- how do you think his contract situation? Uh, in you know, influences or might affect his performance this year. Well, listen, I'll be honest with you. I think they're gonna run him into the ground. I think they say, "Hey, he's not coming back next year. Why are we saving this guy? He's gonna get four hundred and something touches this season, and they're gonna run him into the ground because they don't care." Well, don't you think that he might be aware of that? No, because if he wants that big mega contract that he wants to get, he's gonna have to produce. Okay. Fair enough. He's gonna he's gonna have to get his, you know, usual twelve hundred yards rushing, seven hundred yards ca- or six hundred yards catching, mm-hmm. and fifteen total touchdowns, and show everybody that he's still gonna be the number one guy in the league. Like take it, take it like baseball. It's a contract year. He's got to do what he can do yeah. to get. Yeah, that but contract. the, pro- the, the, the problem is that football, football out, for the way which football. Is why you should, if you pick him up, and don't don't keep him as a keeper because next year he's just gonna drop off. Because he'll get picked up by the Dolphins, and then he'll be terrible. Well, no, I, I wish he would come to the Dolphins. But no, he's going to end up getting picked up by a team much worse than us, like the Jets or mm-hmm. yeah. you know, something like that. Because yeah. he's just chasing the money, and you know, that's it. then he might drop off in production. Yo, but get his I money, think man. this year he's going to get... You think he's going to chew? You think he's going to eat? Yeah. Oh, my God. All right, yeah. cool. I, I disagree. I put... Uh, girly is my number one, but I'm pretty like I'm I'm, I'm pretty scratch guy. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's it's Again, one it's one A one B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we we agree one A one B with Todd Gurley and and Le'Veon Bell. Now the third, I have David Johnson. Okay, so a lot of people are going Ezekiel Elliott, and I'll tell you why I don't believe that. I'm really afraid of him and his behavior. I really am. I know it's a stupid reason to not want to to not want to pick a guy. No, it's he's not. There, I mean, look at Josh Gordon. And if he's there, speaking of which, we'll get to Josh Gordon. Yeah, later. we will. If he's there at that, if he's there at a certain point, then yeah, you know, you're gonna you're gonna take him, but. 
I'm really worried that that knucklehead is going to do something stupid and get himself suspended for the rest of the season. Here's here's the my caveat to okay. that. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys have proven they don't give a shit about what their players do. And since Jerry Jones has Roger Goodell by the fucking short hairs, Roger Goodell's not going to drop the hammer on, okay. on Ezekiel Elliott. Right. Yeah, so. listen. It's a run-heavy offense. He had the second most points per game last year. He has the best offensive line in the league. He's going to get the ball a shit ton. I would say David Johnson only because David Johnson catches the ball a lot okay. more than Ezekiel Elliott does. If he comes back fully healthy from his injury, that's which, my, which was That's my thing there. But this is the thing. It wasn't a hip. It wasn't a knee. It wasn't an Achilles tendon or anything crazy like that. It was a wrist that kept him out. I'm not worried about that. Yeah, but think about this. I had David Johnson. So I'm a little hurt. Like, I'm, I'm a little cautious. But again, if he's there at when I'm drafting, I'm taking him. But listen to this. The guy hurt his wrist, and he couldn't play for the rest of the season. Yeah, he broke his wrist. He hurt his wrist. Okay. Suck it up, buttercup. Listen, you're a running back. Without a wrist, you can't hold the ball. You can hold it in your other hand. There's a guy who doesn't have fingers playing football right Somebody now. Somebody hasn't played football before. Yeah, that guy doesn't catch the ball or hold the ball with his fingers because he plays defense. Who cares? Be a man. <laughs> Listen, Jesus. that that there. everybody has that guy who's burned them before. We're going to get to my guy later. Oh, you have quite a few. Yeah, and uh, and the, they just they burn black like chlamydia. <laughs> yeah, and I just want I hate them, but you know that seems to be half. I'm not worried about David Johnson burning mm-hmm. anybody this year. He's gonna be a stud. No. He's so, gonna get the ball. Here's my, my he, Look, so here's the concern with David Johnson. Who's their quarterback this year? Exactly, their quarterback is Sam Bradford, who we didn't even talk about in Sam our list. Sam Bradford, but Sam Bradford is a very good quarterback when he's on the field. The problem with Sam Bradford is, is that he, he can stay healthy. He's Mr. Glass. Yeah, I mean, if he stays on the field, he can produce. He can produce pretty good numbers. But he just can't stay healthy. Now, they do have a young quarterback in Josh Rosen that they drafted this year, who I liked a lot coming out of college. But, I mean, what's what's a young quarterback's favorite weapon? A running back. A good running back. What is David Johnson? What are they going to lean on? Back? What are they going to lean off in, if the offense seems to get in? And, uh, uh, you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. If the offense is in a rut. Animatic? No. What is it? Uh what is it with your blood and the thing and the, you know, you got the thing with the, where you get, where you lose energy. Anemic. Petite. Anemic. Anemic. There we go. Wow. Yeah, that's me. That's right there. Timestamp that. We're done. All right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I I have him as number three. Again, he they could be 2A, 2B for a lot of people. I think both those guys, that's my tier one is those four players. Le'Veon Bell. Todd Gurley, David Johnson, Ezekiel Elliott. In a PPR league, I would lean towards David Johnson more because he is going to catch the ball more than Ezekiel Absolutely. Elliott. Okay, cool. All right, so what's the next tier of backs? So let's burn through the next few guys. My my next guy would be Shaquan Barkley. Even though he's hurt? Even though he's hurt, it's a what's little... Wrong? What's wrong with It's him? a little tweak of the hamstring. Now, listen. Hamstrings are like one of those they, lingering they, they can things. linger. They can linger. It, it might not be pretty for him, but... I didn't Bro, know let me tell you a, a couple there, names that you chose over Shaquan Barkley. Uh, 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 Saquon. I'm going to be uh, like uh, Key and Pell in that. <laughs> Saquon. A, a-, a- Ron. Alvin Kamara, Leonard Fournette, Melvin Gordon, Kareem Hunt, and Dalvin Cook. You I'm picked not... all of those. You picked you picked Barkley, Barkley over, over all Leonard of those. Fournette? Yeah. Well, um, listen. Again, guys. Are you on this crack? Is, this is tier two. I'm not saying he's my number five guy per se. It depends a lot on PPR and stuff like that. He would have more value for me in a PPR league than a Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette catches 20 balls a game. This guy's in line to catch maybe 50 or 60, which is a, g- a season. A season. A season, yeah. yeah. Sorry, not a game. A season. Yeah. That'd be crazy. A season, they got 50 balls a he'd game. He'd be the number one pick every year. But, yes, a season. Sorry. And if you look at the numbers, that's elite running back numbers. Guys that catch the ball 50, 55, 60 times a season are mm-hmm. elite running backs. Okay. How Leonard much tape Ford- do they have on him? <laughs> not enough apparently because did you see his first run of preseason what's, what's the sample size of his uh, what's his professional sample listen, size listen running backs is the one position where you can come in day one and produce Alvin Kamara did it last year every year there's two or Fournette three Fournette did it last year Fournette did it every year there's two or three four running backs that come into the league Hunt did it last year as well three running backs that are all going to be top 10 guys this year probably mm-hmm. that came in last year and and, and Turn the NFL upside down. Yeah, all guys that you you chose below Barkley. Yes. Well, we'll talk about that. Kamara, in my opinion, even though he had a great year last year, he falls in line with the with with the same discussion we were talking about last year. He's he's not going to re- like repeat what he did. He's yeah, not gonna he's not going to repeat what he, what he did last year. Yeah. Monster numbers last year. 
But he averaged like seven yards a touch, which was like a yard higher than everybody else in the league. He's not going to do that again. Teams are going to start keying on him. Because they have tape. Because they have tape. And because New Orleans has less. Yeah, less. Especially with Ingram out for 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 four four games. Yeah, Yeah. they had a good duel with those guys, you know, running the ball and switching things around. I just don't see him putting up the production that he did last year. He's going to be good, but he's not going to be, you know, the league winner that he was last year. All right. So you've made your case for Barkley. You've talked about Kamara. What about Fournette? You guys both – I picked him up too. He was yeah. in my, my – he was on my team last well, he's year a, he's our he's our other keeper. It's, we okay. have Bell and Fournette. So. Oh, yeah, not bad. Oh, wow. You guys are really yeah. locked up. And yeah. the reason why – well, there's many reasons. But the reason why we're keeping him in our league is because it is a standard league. It's non-PPR. Yeah. He has more value in that league. Yes. He's going to run the ball a lot. He's going to get all the goal line carries. He's not going to catch the ball. So, for me, guys like Melvin Gordon, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Hunt, and, and Shaquan Barkley are all rated just a tad higher than him because of that ability to catch the ball. Okay. Like, I would have Melvin Gordon, even in a non-PPR league, in a standard league, I would have Melvin Gordon just a tad over Leonard Fournette. Okay. Melvin, Gord- Melvin Gordon will probably be my number six guy behind Shaquan Barkley. He's being picked up average 11, 11 in, uh, pick number 11. So, the, in a 10-team league, the first pick of the, the second round. The first pick round. of the second round. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. What was next? Who else you got in that second tier? Were you talking about Fournette or or Gordon? Gordon, Gordon is picking. Gordon. Him up. Okay. Okay. Fournette's yeah. picking tenth. Uh, he's yeah. getting so, picked. So so my tier two guys again, just really quick, would be Barkley, Camara, Hunt, Fournette, um, Melvin Gordon, and Dalvin Cook. That okay. would be my tier two guys. So on on Kareem Hunt, really quick, we talked a little earlier about how we don't have a lot of faith in the Kansas City quarterback situation. Yeah. They don't have exactly – I mean, they still have Travis Kelsey. They don't exactly have, you know, this world breaker at receiver that we can talk about. Yeah. Tyreek Hill, you you and I have talked about before, not on here, about how he's not going to duplicate. You don't think he's going to duplicate no. his performance from last year. How much do you think the talent around the a running back affects the running back's production? Well, I mean, it hurts if you don't have the – I mean, listen, the guys are talented, what he has around there. I think it comes down a little more to I just don't trust that quarterback situation as much as Alex Smith. Alex Smith was very consistent. He was very reliable. But, um, yeah, if you don't have the weapons around those players, the running back position, I mean, it kind of happens with Leonard Fournette at times where teams just stack the box and say, hey, Blake Bortles, beat us. Yeah. And the problem and is that he struggles to. Yeah, I get you. But the thing is that Len- I think Leonard Fournette is a little bigger, a little stronger. Oh, he's way bigger and stronger. That dude is much man. So, you know, I think that lends itself a little bit more to him maximizing some of those opportunities more than a Kareem Hunt. I mean, again, Kareem Hunt was amazing last year, but I just I worry that because he's got a, a, a new quarterback and they don't have a lot of, you know, talent around them at the other skill positions, that that might affect his stock a little bit. And, you know, you might be better served with a Gordon or a Camera or a or Kamara. Whatever. Do you call him a Camera? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know. I mean, I would. I would draft <laughs> Gordon. I would draft Gordon it's ahead okay. of him. Okay, I didn't know how to say anemic. <laughs> I would draft. I would draft Gordon ahead of him. I would draft um, Fournette and probably Dalvin Cook ahead of him. That would be kind of you know. Even Dalvin for Cook, me. who was like getting like nineteen people in our league, tried to. Then that's way more people in our actually in the league. But everybody in the league tried to submit a trade for Dalvin Cook during this off season right now. Every single one of those got downvoted because everybody else wants Dalvin wants to Cook. draft him. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting to see where he goes. I got. He's him. not a keeper for anybody. No, no. actually, the guy that I mean has a hell of a team. He had uh, David Johnson last year, who he put on IR, and mm-hmm. is keeping this year, and is keeping Kamara. Oh wow! So yeah. I mean, you have Dalvin Cook sitting there. We had a similar situation. We have two other running backs that we're not keeping that actually are pretty good, and that I want to talk about a little later on. But yeah, he he can't keep them. I mean, he has two really good running backs, which is a hell of a problem to have. Yeah, it's a great but, problem to have. Yeah, he's going to be a free agent. So yeah, so we'll see we'll see where he goes. I think I think you know we have him slotted. I think he's going number two. I think Barkley's going one, and and Dalvin Cook's going two in tonight's draft. Um, so we'll see you know we'll see what that looks like. Okay. So I I just want to give a couple of quick things about some of these running backs we talked about. Fournette last year was fifth most in points per game. Only had three games out of the top thirteen for running backs. So he's consistent. He's a guy that you want to. Yeah, he's gonna get you eighty and a touchdown. I yeah. mean that's just just who he is. Yeah. Um. Melvin Gordon, two years back-to-back with uh, top eight running back numbers in fantasy football. He was third in 
the league last year in red zone attempts and 10th in targets in the red zone. So he's a guy that's going to get a lot of opportunities on a really good offense to score points. Which is kind of surprising because after his first year, I thought he was going to be a disaster. Yeah, it was injuries. He's kind of seemed to get well, over the Well, and he had like a fumble fumble issue his first year too. I don't, I don't Yeah, he may have. Yeah. I, I don't remember that. But I remember the injuries kind of kept him, you know, he was a headache for a lot of people. But he seemed to get over that, you know, that problem. And now he's just consistently good player. Yeah, good player. All right, who's next? What else you got? So, I guess uh, Tier 3? Tier 3. Tier 3. All right, so I have McCaffrey, Howard, Freeman, McKinnon, Mixon, and... Derrick Henry or Collins? Collins and Kenyon Drake. Oh! Yeah, going that's the homer? a little bit of a homer. Yeah, I was going to say, going the homer. I get, yo, so yesterday, I... Listen, I can't... I can't dis- uh, hold on. I can't disagree. That's basically what I have hit here also in the, in the next little tier. All right, yeah. now, I'll save that for when we get to Drake. Go ahead. Yeah, so, you know, McCaffrey last year led all running backs with 113 mm-hmm. targets. And I think that we, we talked about it before when we talked with about Cam. Cam. Like, it's just going to it's just gonna get better. That relationship's going to grow, and they're going to figure out, man, they're going to be – it might even behoove you to try to get both of them on your team and just fucking rock Double it. Double points it. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean – And I'm not a huge fan of that, by the way. I'm not, But in this sense, like, if there's there are two people that I would be going for and trying to get them both on my team – it would be Cam and Cam and McCaffrey. Yeah, I, I agree 100. percent I mean, yeah. the guy put up, he put up great numbers last year. He ended up as a number 15 uh, running mean? back in points per game. But um, and his offensive coordinator he, situation over there now apparently is is one that's you know good. is going to lend itself yeah. to yes. that type of of offense. Yeah. yeah. And, and the crazy part is he was splitting carries last year a lot and getting vultured by Cam. Yeah, he, he's the number one guy this year hands down. He had 80 receptions last year. That so was third people. in the league, so he was behind only Elmy Bell and Alvin Kamara. Did yeah. I steal that stat from you? No, but no. yes, but still I didn't want to be. <laughs> um yeah, so I mean he's going to catch the ball a lot in for fantasy uh, you know, running backs, that's a huge thing like we keep pounding into the ground. It's a huge thing. Guys that can catch the ball are going to go higher, mm-hmm. especially in PPR leagues. Yeah. I mean 80 receptions for a guy that wasn't even technically the full time starter the whole season. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah but, and Stewart's now gone, but they did sign CJ Anderson. So there Garbage. you go, Royals. Sneaky one thousand yard back last year. Garbage. Yeah, CJ Anderson. That's one of his burn players. One of yeah. my burn players that I would I wouldn't draft <laughs> if he, I had if he was there in the last pick in the last fucking. You still wouldn't pick I'm him. Not pick sneaky one thousand yard player. Yeah, it's cool. oh, all right, guys. I'll be right back. So yeah, I mean, after him, I would say a guy like uh, Jordan Howard. Jordan Howard again in a standard league for me. Um, is valued a little higher because he just doesn't catch the ball a lot. Now their their offensive coordinator has tried to make a point about, yeah, we're going to get this guy the ball on third down, this, that, and the other. He just physically doesn't catch the ball well, but he runs the ball like an animal. Yeah. he He's another Leonard Fournette. He's going to get you 1,200 yards rushing. He's going to get you eight or nine rushing touchdowns in a season. He plays for a team that a lot of people are thinking whose offense is going to be much improved this year, and he actually has a very favorable schedule he only plays one top six defense from last year. One top six defense the whole season. Oh, shit. And it's the Vikings. Okay. You know, all Division the, game. Yeah. So, all, all the other defenses he plays are not – are in the, the bottom half of the league as far as run defense, which is something that's going to help him out a lot. What is, what's the Bears' non-conference opponent this year? Well, he plays the AFC East. Oh, so we talked about that a little earlier with Brady, yeah. right? It's a it's a really weak division. Bad defenses. The yeah. uh, the Jets, Dolphins, Bills all ended in the bottom half of run defense last year. We, from the looks of preseason, didn't look like we were getting any better at run defense. So yeah, I mean, they also have I think it's Mike Nagy is their offensive coordinator this year. He's the guy that came over from Kansas City. And what does Kansas City do? So, free the running backs. Feed the running backs. They throw the ball to the running backs. They throw the ball to tight ends. They have a pretty efficient, pretty effective offense. And he's kind of come in here, and I think he's gonna he's gonna change this offense a bit. And I think Howard's just gonna get a lot more opportunities in our keeper league. That's a guy that I'm targeting early in the first round. I mean, uh, you saw? Did you see the um, uh, thing in Dominican Sue? Yeah, yeah. Laughing at. I mean, whatever. Listen, these guys are a little butt hurt. I'm not gonna get into that. Jarvis hasn't stopped talking about the Dolphins, but you know. Oh yeah, him too. Yeah. Oh my God. Every every week it's oh this that and the other about the Dolphins. Whatever. Let his career die in Cleveland, where everybody else's career gets to die. <laughs> Good luck with that, Jarvis. Wow. 
that might be that's yeah that's the show closer <laughs> it was awesome all right so what did i miss uh he's talking shit about jarvis landry because he's a cocksucker oh okay wait so, we're on wide receivers already no no no, no. 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 <laughs> christ no, no, no. so jordan howard jordan howard uh oh, okay. is, is uh we were talking about jordan howard's non-conference schedule how it looks pretty favorable and uh there you go so that's yeah that. he has a very weak uh very weak schedule for running backs this year and a new offensive coordinator that seems to feed running backs a lot so i think he you know i have him pretty high on that uh second tier third tier he's oh, actually tier. i have him on the third tier only because a lot of the guys ahead of him you know either catch the ball more or might be on better teams offenses. and better yeah. offenses but i mean it's it, it's hard to say no to to, to uh, jordan howard i mean at, behind him i would say guys like uh devonta freeman we know what he can do you know, he did it a couple of years ago in Atlanta. I have but, a question. Why does everybody – why is Devontae Freeman the guy – Devonta Freeman. Dev, okay. Why is Freeman the guy that gets all of the pub? And, I mean, Tevin Coleman, pretty consistent guy for those guys. So, you want to hear you want to hear a really quick Freeman story? Yeah. Get this. So, he – the first year he was with Atlanta – maybe it was the first year he was with Atlanta. I drafted him, and he didn't produce for the first two weeks. So, then I dropped him. Oh, boy. And then that's when he exploded. And then he exploded. And that explosion was all over my face. Yeah. Nice. Mm. Yeah. So it's a Devontae. If you're, uh, he's one of those guys who didn't burn me, but it still hurts a little bit. Yeah. 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 You, sometimes you got to stick You got to stick through the uh, the tough couple of games. Yeah. That's what happened on that famous trade that we were talking about, Tom Brady. Yeah. We got Tom Brady on the cheap, the year that he was struggling, the first four or five games of the season. And then he went off. And then he went off and yeah. won the championship. And and you are, you are these absolutely guys are right. Still it butthurt. is Devonta Freeman, not Devontae. Yeah, it's Devontae. Wow. Yeah, I do homework. <laughs> so Rating is fundamental. So who's after Who's after Freeman? Playoffs. Um, Freeman, I would say it's uh, Jared McKinnon. I'm pretty excited about this year mm-hmm. he's going into an offense with uh the guy that turned devonta freeman into a monster yeah so it's, it's kyle shanahan's kyle offense shanahan, yeah oh uh, they have they have a new quarterback who who seems like he might be the real deal mm-hmm. yeah i mean this dude there's no reason to think garoppolo is not going to be a pretty good consistent quarterback for them uh he looked great in the uh back ha- half of last season when he was playing for them and I just think that uh, McKinnon, you know, in that offense, is going to put up numbers, especially again in a PPR league. Who's okay? Yeah, never mind. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, Kyle Shanahan has produced a top ten offense in six out of his last nine seasons. Holy hell! Yeah. So I mean, the guy maybe Garoppolo is like a, a nice, like late, late, late pickup as a backup, just in case the offense is really good. You know who'd be really good on that on that offense? I think Kaepernick. But let's move on. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm not talking. I'm not touching that one. You're not going to stand uh, up for that no, one. No, I think Garoppolo's actually. Are, a oh, you're sitting down on that issue. Yeah, I'm definitely. I'm kneeling on that one. Garoppolo's a much better quarterback than than uh, Capper shits. But um, <laughs> Capper shits. So really quick, Kyle Shanahan has produced three years in a row top eight quarterback, uh, top eight running back. Sorry, in receiving yards and receptions. Holy shit! So he gets. I mean, Carlos Hyde last year. If you look at his numbers, put up monster numbers on a not so good San Francisco team. Because of this offensive scheme, I mean, McKinnon fits more that Devonta Freeman role, catches the ball really well, same size, same running style. And if he can avoid injuries, because he's not the biggest dude, if he can avoid injuries, I think he's going to have a pretty good year. Yo, can you just log in to my ESPN and do my draft? <laughs> uh, I could. Your your freaking homework is legit. Uh, legit, you, man, yo, listen, legit. If yo. you're not doing your homework for something that you're – Invest you realize I'm, I'm time gonna, and money in. I'm just going to take mean, this point? information and just start dropping it during the draft. And I'd be like, "Yo, you have no idea. Kyle Shanahan's offense, top three running backs the last yeah, three dude, seasons." I mean, it, I mean, listen, and I'm not pulling this stuff out of my butt. It's all stuff you can go on the on the internet and find. You yeah. know, I, I'm just taking the time to to search it. You know, right. ESPN, CBS Sports. I listen to the Fantasy Footballers podcast. They're really good. Yeah. You know, I take little tidbits from here and there, and I kind of make my own uh, opinion. I make my own opinion about these players, but. You know, in my opinion, if you're going to spend the money or you're going to spend the time doing stuff like this, you got to do your homework. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Awesome. All right. So God, that, I really feel like this, this show should just be Plex just going off about all of his information. This is great. I it's not. Boner. And listen. <laughs> huh? I have a boner. Yeah. This isn't like this isn't like like us blowing smoke up your ass. Like you. And we drill a little bit of information here and there. But dude, 
You are our fantasy football guru. I appreciate it. Thank no, you. no worries. I, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm a guru, but I enjoy it, man. For me, it's fun. It's it's just, mm-hmm. you know, it's a, it's a lot of fun to, to do it. Mm-hmm. I've had pretty good success. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully it'll continue. Yep, that's right. Yep. Championship now, I, this year. I do want to talk about one guy that I had on this list just really quick. The Darius guys. It sucks that he got hurt, but I actually had him as like my number like 12 or 13 guy. Mm-hmm. I thought he was going to be the number two rookie running back behind Barkley. Man, it sucks that he got hurt. Yeah, that – that uh, so we were talking about this the other day when we were doing our thing. The two things that are going to affect, at least our draft in particular, mm-hmm. that are going to have the biggest impact on it is guys getting hurt and whoever um, Mao picks at number three. Because depending on what he does, it's going to really change the, 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 the how the rest of the draft plays out. If mm-hmm. he goes running back, the draft's going to go one extreme way. And if he goes – Gronk or something like that again, then the draft is going to go a totally different way. Is guys the guy got hurt last night? No, no guys he is got the, hurt the first, first, preseason, first, first preseason game. Oh, that's why he's he on here. He's yeah, gone. Yeah, so, so yeah, he got yeah, banged he, up. He, tore his ACL. He's yeah. done. He was going, I think, somewhere in the top or middle of the third round until he tore his ACL. Yeah, but awesome. um, so yeah, just to finish off this tier here, uh, Joe Mixon. I know he's burned a lot of guys last year. Dude's got a lot of potential. Game very similar to Le'Veon Bell. The way he moves, the way he runs the ball, the way he catches the ball. He actually has a really favorable schedule. Second easiest in the NFL this year. Okay. And, I mean, he's just a guy that's going to, I think, get a lot of work this year. Well, and, and if, they're, if, if they're smart, they have to give him work because Red Rifle is Yeah, trash. the Red Rifle is trash. Uh, Jeremy Hill, which was kind of a big thorn on his side, is not there anymore. And I Bernard's mean, still there though, right? Bernard's still so there. So they're still probably going to do a little bit of that splitting. Yeah, they might, but it's not going to be as big of a share as it was when uh, when uh, Jeremy Hill was here. I'm going to take photos of all of his notes. <laughs> and just but, um, click, click, Listen, click. The, the guy has big play potential. He has a favorable schedule. I think the workload is going to be there. And for running backs, workload is everything. You you pick a guy that's going to get the ball a lot. All right. So settle an argument for us. Cause okay. We, he, he, and right. I, he and I had, were going back and forth about okay. this the other day. AT, ATM is all, is absolutely okay. As long as she, she uses Listerine. Perfect. <laughs> and I, and I, just, I agree with you 100%. Mm-hmm. Where are you on workload versus talent? Like the talent around, you know how good the team he's on. Because I'm, I'm a little bit more in the camp of if you're on a shit team who's gonna end up throwing the ball a lot, you know. Yeah. Whatever, and then but if you're on a great team and, and you're that type of offense, I like that. He subscribes more to it. Doesn't matter if you're on a shit team. You're on a Just shit keep team. Feeding him. They're gonna keep feeding that running back. Workload is king amongst running backs. Where are you at? I'm gonna lean towards him. Okay. Yeah. Because he's got notes. Yeah. <laughs> Fancy notes. <laughs> He's got fancy notes. I'm taking photos of all of them that's before awesome. I leave. It's going to be like, yo, click, 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 click. I click. still write in cursive. Nice. No, no. That, that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> no. They're, they're, te- they're teaching. They're, okay. Uh-huh. All right. So, all right. So, workload is king. So yeah, that's... workload is king amongst running backs. I would, I, would, I would actually say yes. Like, because if you're going to keep feeding somebody, you're giving them the opportunity every chance you can to just keep getting a break, breaking away, doing something. You know, you're also giving them the opportunity to fumble a especially lot. On, especially but, on teams with good defenses, Jags, teams like that. They're going to feed the ball. They're going to go up in a game. They're going to control the clock. They're going to give Leonard Fournette 24, 26 carries a game. And yep. that's what you want. Because all it takes is one run from a guy like that, 30 yards and a touchdown, and your your week is, you know, yeah. your week is done. He's done his job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Absolutely. So, at the end, I have here Alex Collins, who had a pretty good year last year. You know, four yards, uh, a carry. Uh, Alex Collins 21. from Baltimore. From Baltimore, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, he scored at least 10 points in seven of the, of the seven out of nine final. Blah, 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 let me do that again. Okay. So, he scored at least 10 points in seven out of the last nine weeks of fantasy football. So he's one of those guys, if you had him at the end of your season, he's, he's a, carrying you into the playoffs and into a championship. Got it. You know, and, and he's going to be the number one guy this year. He didn't start as the number one guy last year as running back, but he's going to be the number one guy this year. He's going to get opportunities. He, I have Don't they a, have a, a rookie that we were talking about um, that we that they – or is that somebody else? Uh, I think that's somebody else. I don't think they picked up a rookie. Okay. They have Kenneth Dixon as their number two guy. Okay. And then I have just, you know, a little bit of a homer pick, but I also think he's a really good running back, is Kenyon Drake. 
Okay. So we picked up Kenny and Drake towards the end of last season. He performed really well for us. Yeah, after JJ was traded to the to the Eagles and won yeah. championship. Yeah, I um I'm I'm actually not down on Kenny and Drake, but okay. one, this is the story I alluded to a little earlier. Yesterday, Plex sends me a bunch of messages, and the last one I read because we talked about it. When we did our war room the other day, and we done I done some research, and he done some research, and a lot of the things that we read said that they weren't very high on Kenyon Drake. So we were kind of like, well, you know, maybe on the comeback, whatever. So then all of a sudden, I look at my message and said he had thirty plus yards and a touchdown, and that was like the first message I saw. It's the last one he'd sent, and for whatever reason, I immediately thought he was talking about his son, my godson, Damian. At, at flag football, I was like, "Oh shit, they're counting his yards and shit now." No, and then no, no. And I look at the he, phone, and it was about Kenyon Drake, and all of a sudden he's fucking like, uh, "Kenyon Drake." Yeah, he, so. Well, he didn't have a touchdown, but he had a he's had at least one run of thirty yards in every preseason game. I know it's preseason, but he's broken. He broke off one big run in every game, and last night had a thirty, I think it's six yard reception and a thirty something yard run in the first half of one game. So I, he just has big play ability. Oh, he's super he, fast. That's he's, for sure. He's That's a good running sure. back. He's super fast. He has an improved offensive line. I mean, they're not going to be great, but they're going to be a little better than last year. And he, well, there's no way the Dolphins aren't better than last year now that Jay Cutler is not under under center. Jesus. There's age. No yeah, way. Yeah, Nobody's he, worried about he, Ryan he, Tannehill. Rough. No, no. Listen, I take I take Ryan Tan, and I'm not a Tannehill fan by any stretch. But I take Ryan Tannehill on one leg over Jay Cutler. Yeah, I. I it's hard to disagree. Yeah. Jay Cutler threw off on one leg pretty much the whole season. And, and in hindsight, they should have they should have signed Kaepernick and not Jay Cutler. But uh, yeah, I guess told you so. But um, yeah, I mean, listen, he was the number one running back the last five games of the season with 444 yards running. Uh, he averaged five yards a carry. Now, do I think he's going to average five yards a carry this year? No, he's going to be a little under that. But I mean, yeah, if, if he's five at, games, if he's, if he's he was at four the and a half, one running back. Yeah, no, no, you know, I, I, in, in I, rushing I, I get it. I, I, I get that. Yeah, it feels good. All right. SRBs? Uh, I I got a couple more guys I want to talk about really quick. Uh, A couple of rookies. I really like Royce Freeman this year. Uh, In the Denver system, running backs in Denver. Oh, that's why I was thinking about earlier. Always tend to do well. Do well. They had C.J. Anderson last year, 1,000-yard back. Sneaky. Even though the black guy hates him. But, um, yeah, I think Royce Freeman is the number one, you know, the, the, the most talented back on that. In that system, they have Case Keenum there now, better quarterback because they couldn't move the ball across the street with the garbage they had at quarterback last year. Um, it's gonna it, Case Keenum is gonna improve everybody on that offense. Yep, and I think Royce Freeman is gonna be a big part of that offense. Okay, uh, let me ask you a question: Who are your running backs to handcuff? All right, if there's one, one, two, who are they? All right. Running backs to handcuff, like, oh, handcuff guys. Uh, Latavius Murray, only because, you know, Dalvin Cook with yeah. the knee injury and stuff like that. Um, Coleman's always a good handcuff guy with Devonta Freeman. He's going to, even with Devonta Freeman, Devonta Freeman injured or not injured, he's going to get a lot of touches. A lot of touches, a lot of catches. He's, he gets involved in that offense a lot. Rashad Penny's another guy. Yeah. Um, he's more talented than Carson. Uh, Carson, I think, is getting the nod as the number one guy right now. But I think Penny eventually is going to win out that job and he's going to be. Uh, the number one back. If you have a strong enough team where you can sit this guy for the first five or six weeks of the season, I think it's going to turn out really well for you at the end. So pick Carson over Penn. Now, this is an argument me and him had uh, the other day when we were looking at guys. I'm not very big on Henry this year. I think he's going to be one of the bust. I think a lot of guys are looking at him, you know, in the fourth round-ish, maybe end of the fourth, beginning of the fifth is where he's going if, from some of the drafts. I've yeah, seen so he's it. going late fourth. He's going 37th. Yeah. yeah, so I actually think Deion Lewis is the guy to pick up in that offense. They gave him a boatload of money to go over there. He catches the ball a lot better. He's going to be the guy in that offense, I think, that's going to be uh, worth picking up. I mean, mm-hmm. in, in that backfield, I think he's going to end up with a better fantasy year, especially in PPR, than uh, Henry is. Okay. I... I... Listen, if you have Grom Hellscream in your backfield and you're going to give him the ball, you give Grom Hellscream the ball. That guy's a fucking monster of a human being. He's an orc, basically. <laughs> give him the ball. He's, they have an amazing offensive line. They just signed Taylor Lewan to the richest left tackle contract in the history of the league. He watched him his whole career at Michigan. He's a mauler. Give him the ball. And I, I think... I, I don't disagree. The problem is he, he doesn't catch the ball that well. And, dude... 
I mean, they just paid Deion Lewis a ton of money to go over there for a reason. He's yeah, dude, but be... ultimately, they're going to give the ball to whoever they think is going to help them win, regardless of the amount of money. People are expecting that Mariota is going to have a bounce back year. You know, his the, the, he was terrible last year. Yeah. So, the, the I, don't think, is I don't think he'll duplicate that poor of a performance from last year. So, if he improves to his average, if he, if he, he regresses to the mean, that means you're going to have more opportunity at running back. You're going to have more red zone opportunities because we talked about how one of Derrick Henry's big issues was he didn't have a lot of touchdowns. I don't know, man. I just the guy's too big, too strong, too talented, too fast for his size to to not take a flyer yeah, on. In I, my opinion, I, I don't. I mean, maybe in a standard league, if you want to take him, but if you look at the average draft status, Deion Lewis is going about six or seven picks under him, if I'm not mistaken. He's going right there. It's because a lot of people know that he's going to be very involved in that offense. If they're down in games, he's the the back that's going to be in there catching the ball. Wait, who? Deion, Deion Lewis. Lewis. Okay, so Deion Lewis is at sixty one. Okay, so they, they and where was and where was this other guy? Thirty seven or something. Who? No, Henry. Henry was thirty seven or something. Uh, yeah. So Deion Lewis is sixty one, and then you've got I'll tell you right now, Derrick Henry is thirty seven. Yeah, that's yeah, a that's it, a big. It, yeah, so you're talking it, about sixty one is, is the first the, in a ten team that's the first pick of the seventh round. Yeah. yeah. Versus thirty seven, which is the sort of last pick of the fourth round. Like like. If I'm sitting there in the fourth round, I'm looking at a lot of other running backs besides Henry, and I would feel like the value for Deion Lewis in the seventh round is a lot better. I'll tell you, Frank than, agrees than with you. We were talking about the other day. Yeah. We, uh, Frank, Frank's not you know very big on Henry yeah, either. I, yeah. I mean, a couple of other guys. Marshawn Lynch is, is some guy that you know I I kind of have just him some my, in my <laughs> fourth in my fourth tier. I have him in my fourth tier. He would be my running back four or something like that on my team. Same with Jay Ajayi. I mean, Jay Ajayi is on a really good team, mm-hmm. but they yeah. have a lot of talent on that team. A lot of mouths to They've feed. got a lot of options. Yeah, yeah. that's what you're Terrence saying. Terrence Pros is back there. Uh, Corey Clement, they like a lot. Um, you know, he's going to get his touches and stuff like that, but he might have games where he's only getting 12 rushes in a game. And that's not a guy that I'm willing to spend a fourth or fifth round pick because he's going, I think, right, ar- right around that Derrick Henry pick is he's, what I was going to yeah, say. he's going 38. He's, he's going right around there. And to me, neither of those guys are worth that high of a pick. Gotcha. Okay. Um, another quick handcuff, Rex Burkhead. A lot of guys are high on him. I yeah, a lot of people Patriots. are high on Rex yeah. Burkhead. Um, I think he's going to end up being the number one back on Eating. that team. Yeah, I mean, as far as fantasy points, the, it's scary because that offense always kind of rotates backs. One week it's so-and-so. The next week it's Fulanito. You know, it's always somebody different on, yeah. on that Bill offense. Belichick just has a, has a raffle of who's going to be their next running yeah, back. It, it feels that way. Board. Yeah, he just throws a dart. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Um, what about James White? What do you got? Where are you at in James, James White? James White, I mean, he's another guy again in that in that offense that he's gonna catch the ball. He's gonna have some games where he's gonna catch, you know, five passes for 70 <sighs> yards and a touchdown, and he's gonna help you out. But yeah. Yeah, he's going low. He's going low. But that's pretty good again, value it's for, a, for, it's a, for, for a RB5 fourth, flex guy. 14th round. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of those guys you just want to play him on the right week. So basically you you pick Justin Tucker over James White. Uh saying. no. But <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you, you you play him on the right. If you play him on the right week, he's gonna have two or three games in the season. Where but that's the key. So if you're talking to somebody who doesn't really know how to play and is kind of maybe just tertiary in fantasy football, playing him on the right week is kind of is gonna be difficult because you got to know what to look for. You know what I mean? Yeah, you look you look for the matchups. You look for you know when he's playing a top a, a bottom six or seven run defense him. or 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 yeah or a, a gotcha. team like that. You play him. If you just have maybe you get lucky and you play him on one, one of your starters has a bye week and it just happens to be that week where he blows up. But you know, you, you gotta look at those opportunities and you gotta take those chances. One one or two more guys really quick I want to talk about because I have a list of about 40, but we're not gonna get through all of them. Carry on Johnson for mm-hmm. Detroit is gonna be a really good player. He might not start the season as as the uh number one starter. Legaris Blunt is there, and they still have Abdullah. Uh, who I definitely don't think is going to do anything, but I think in the long run, another guy like we were talking about, uh, uh, Rashad Penny, if you can mm-hmm. grab him and your team's strong enough where you can stash him to week five, six, seven, he's going to end up being the starter there, I think. He's going to end up putting really good numbers. He can catch well. He big guy. He runs hard. I think he's going to be a really nice kind of sleeper late okay. round guy. So and just, I gotta, oh. just for the record. Last season, James White put up 78 fantasy points. Justin Tucker, 151 fantasy points. Yeah, no, no, that's Jesus fantastic. Christ. But all right, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I'm drop it. it. Adrian Peterson. 
Woo! Don't I will sleep. Not be drafting Adrian Peterson. He, he's getting picked up. His ADP two hundred and eighty. Yeah, exactly. Two hundred eighty. That so, is the 29th round in a draft that usually yeah. has. That's that's pretty much where he belongs. But don't what? sleep. Okay. Listen, Adrian right. Peterson's gonna come out. He's gonna break off two big games, and everyone's gonna suck his balls because he's Adrian Peterson. Yeah. And then he's gonna start averaging two point nine yards a carry for the rest of the year, and you're gonna hate him. And then he's gonna go hit his kid with a switch. Yeah. Well, you know. I don't disagree with that. <sighs> All right. I think that I think that really anybody any uh, anyone we haven't touched on that you really were thinking to yourself, man, I would I want to talk about this person. Listen, there's a lot of log jams. How about Chris Thompson? Uh, Chris Thompson, not bad in a PPR league. Ninety fourth pick, ninety one. I mean, ninety first pick. You know, you have Adrian Peterson there. You have Fat Rob. You have Samite GP Rain. Samaje. Yeah. So you know, there's a lot of people back there, but he is the third down back. He's a guy that's going to get a lot of catches. As your number four or five running back, I don't think it's a bad idea, mm-hmm. especially, again, in a PPR league. Um, Carlos Hyde is kind of in a log jam there. Him and Duke Johnson and Nick Chubb on a you know what a team that a, a lot of people think are, has gotten better, but they're still a bad team. Right. They still won one game in two years. So, I mean. They're not the Browns. Yeah. Oh, they are the Browns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And with that, everybody. And that's all I have to say about that. All right, everybody, that's it for the first half of the fantasy football extravaganza. That was quarterbacks and running backs. Hope uh, you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys got some good information out of it. Let us know in the email at backofthebusmiami at gmail.com or on Instagram at backofthebuspodcast. If the information was helpful, let us know how your drafts are going or went. Hopefully this helps, and in a couple of days, you guys will get the rest of the show, which is wide receivers and tight ends. Peace out, everybody. See you next time. Ha. You're getting old if you sat down and almost sat in your balls, yeah, man. honestly. That's what happens when they droop solo. Here we go. <laughs> Hello? Hello, operator? I believe my party's been disconnected. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>